Welcome back to the junk room, everybody. You know who I am. And you know who this is. Blue Snaggletooth. Take a look. That's right. The famous Blue Snaggletooth. Probably one of the most famous variation figures that have ever been made. If you call it a variation. To me, he doesn't hold his gun real good. To me, it's more of an of exclusive figure for Sears. But I guess technically it's a variation. Or... The red snaggle tooth is a variation, meaning that this one came first. But anyway, it's probably one of the most known Star Wars Kenner figures. Even people that don't collect the vintage line and don't know much about it, it's probably heard of Blue Snaggle Tooth. I mean, Funko Pop has made a tribute to him, and Hasbro's done some things in, in his honor, and he's a very famous figure. But a lot of people, actually, this week has asked me to tell them more about Blue Snaggle Tooth. How did they get it? Was it on card? Was it sold in stores? And why did they go from blue to red? And I thought, well, I already did a video on that. I'm not going to do that again. And that's when I went to look and see. I did the video back in 2017. Back when uh, I was really first getting started with YouTube. It's one of my first earlier videos. I mean, I was doing like video clips and stuff back then. But, you know, actually making, writing videos. <laughs> writing. Uh, and I thought, hey, it might be best if we just throw this up as it was in 2017. We can have a good laugh because back then I was doing videos inside of a closet. So there's your warning. I'm just using my cell phone at the time, which doesn't look too bad. The mic isn't good, so you'll probably hear a different quality in that. So don't judge this video too hard. No, this is probably like the first or second video that I actually made. So here's the history of Blue Snaggletooth. Hey everybody, hey everybody, let me stand up. Can you see me now? Sorry, we've got a big crowd today. Down in front, Boba Fett, move your rocket. We're going to ask the question that everybody's been asking. Why is Snaggletooth blue? Well, that's because Zeus Skywalker sold his land speeder at a really great price, and he didn't get to buy it. So it made him sad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just joking. We're going to talk about why this blue Snaggletooth became Red Small Snaggletooth. That's right. We started out tall and blue, but we ended small and red. What happened? How did someone make a mistake and get these two mixed up? Well, we're going to talk about it today with the history of Blue Snaggletooth. Everybody dance now! The amazing true history of the Blue Snaggletooth. It was 1978. Star Wars was a huge hit, like you didn't know that. And... The Kenner figures were blowing off the shelf, and they only had 12. But Kenner was looking ahead for 1979, part of their Series 2 line. So, working closely with Lucasfilms, they came up with more aliens and droids for Series 2. Lucasfilm sent them reference photos of aliens and droids that they could base figures on. However, most of these photos were all black and white. And some of them were just headshots of the mask or costumes. So when they got a photo of Snaggletooth, they didn't know what he was wearing or how tall he was. Kenner really didn't know what size to make the figure, so they just assumed he was the same size as every other figure in the line. Well, common, not counting Jawa, Chewbacca, Darth Vader, those that need a little different size. 3.75 inches was the normal size of Star Wars figures. And that's what they did. They made blue Snaggletooth the same as everybody else in the figure line. I mean, that's common sense, right? And they picked blue, and it was the 70s, so they put on some groovy silver boots for him. I mean, if this doesn't scream 70s, what does? So there you go. That's how we start off with a black and white photo of a Snaggletooth. Pretty neat, huh? Kenner just guessed he was the same size as everybody else. And then they came up with a snazzy design. And here's a little, a little information for you. The designer that came up with it, Took this first used this design on his business card back in the early 70s. And he took that design off his business card and transformed it onto a belt buckle for Snaggletooth. And it's become an iconic symbol ever since then. So how did this guy get into stores? Well, I'm going to tell you how. Kenner teamed up with Sears. That's how. Put on your Sunday best, kids. We're going to Sears. In late 1978, Kenner wanted to let everyone know Series 2 was on his way. So they made a deal with Sears. They would feature this guy and the other new aliens, Greedo, Walrus Man, Hammerhead, in the Sears Wish Book. What's a Sears Wish Book? Well, it's a, it was a catalog, probably about that thick. 
and it carried everything in it. And kids like me love this book. I would lay on the floor and circle everything I want for Christmas or just look at the photos. Of course, it wasn't just toys. It had about everything in it. So the whole family would look at it. It was a great way back then to get word out of a new product coming out. And not only that, you'll sell a whole lot of them at Christmas time when families order them. It was, think of it as probably the Amazon.com of 1978, 79. So Kenner team with Sears to release the Cantina. And make sure you get this right because I probably said it about 10 times wrong. They teamed with Sears to make the Cantina Action Adventure set. Yes. Yeah. The Cantina Action Adventure set. Okay, I'm going to say it too many times. I'm going to jinx myself. Not to be confused with the Cantina play set. The Cantina Adventure set was only sold at Sears. And it was basically just cardboard with four figures. Walrus Man, Greedo, Hammerhead, Snaggletooth. But contrary to popular belief, that wasn't the only way to get a blue Snaggletooth. That's right. Sears also let you order just the figures. Well, two figures. You could either get Walrus Man and Hammerhead or Greedo and Snaggletooth. As you can see from this ad, blue Snaggletooth came with Greedo. So parents can either order, order the new figures or get a deal, get the four figures and the display. That's a lot of cheese. Well, 1978 was coming to a close, and Kenner was in full production mode, making four figures for Sears, Walrus Man, Greedo, Snaggletooth, Hammerhead, for their Cantina Adventure set. Again, do not confuse the Cantina Adventure set with the Cantina playset. The playset is cool and fun. It has swinging doors and a little trigger to make figures fall over. But the Sears Adventure set? It's just a piece of stupid cardboard. That sucks. But people today still get confused about who was this based on. A lot of people think it's based on this hunchback guy. But as you can see, none of the figures have a hunchback. And the hunchback guy's not in red. So who was this based on? Let me tell you. This guy. <laughs> That's right. Snaggletooth is a holiday special action figure. <laughs> holiday special action figure. <laughs> yes, believe it or not. Red Snaggletooth is based on a guy not in Star Wars, but in the Holiday Special, which was oddly released around the same time the figure came out. <laughs> An action figure from the Holiday Special. <laughs> I mean, who would want figures from the Holiday Special? <laughs> oh. Wookie boobs. Oh, that is disgusting! <laughs> so production on the Blue Snaggletooth came to a halt. And well, they sent their remaining stock to Sears. And then they started production on the red Snaggletooth for the Series 2 line. However, they did swap this with Sears. If you notice in the 1979 Sears Wish Book, they actually changed the photo of Greedo with blue Snaggletooth to Greedo with red Snaggletooth. But they did not ever change the art box on the Creature Adventure set. It was probably too late to do anything about it. It would cost too much to go back and redo the photo. So, when you order the Creature Adventure set, if you ordered it earlier in 1978, early 1979, chances are you got Blue Snaggletooth. If you ordered it in mid-1979 or later that year, you probably got the red. There was no way to tell inside the box until you opened them up. Sounds broken. Most likely, sir. I'll bet it was something nice, though. But let's make it clear. Blue Snaggletooth was never produced for Series 2. He was only produced for Sears. So in a way, he's a Sears exclusive. This guy never appeared on card. I don't care what people tell you. I hear it all the time. My brother's uncle, sister's cousin's roommate, nephew, cellmate, told me he had a Blue Snaggletooth on card. No, he didn't have a Blue Snaggletooth on card. Sorry, he's a liar. So what I told you was true, from a certain point of view. Most of the people I hear say this come from France. And maybe it's because on the back of the French card, there was a photo of a blue Snaggletooth. I think that may have made people misremember having this figure on a card. But they didn't. He was never carded. Never carded. He was never on a card. So whatever your friends told you, they lied to you. Just like they lied and said they had a rocket firing Boba Fett. You're a liar. Well, the 1970s ended and we all moved on from A New Hope to The Empire Strikes Back. In a way, everyone forgot about Blue Snaggletooth, and he almost became a relic of the 70s. Silver disco boots and all. Jim Excuse me. That's a bad outfit. <laughs> and then the collecting boom of the 90s hit. Kids that grew up on Star Wars, 
They were older now, starting work. They had their own money, and a lot of them went back to collect the old Star Wars line. And that's when people discovered, what? There's two Snaggletooths? There's a blue and a red? Why did I have them both? So now they could go back and get them. And not only did the collectors learn about blue Snaggletooth, so did the dealers. And in the trade magazines, you saw all the ads. Rare, blue Snaggletooth in stock. Rare, blue Snaggletooth, $50. $50 for an action figure, that's crazy. Hmm. Man, I'd give $50 for a blue Snaggletooth's arm right now. But anyway, once the dealers found out about it, it was on all the trade magazines. Now, this was really before the internet, but we had news groups where people sold them. And most people bought their stuff in toy shop magazine or at toy shows. But without the internet, we didn't have much of a way to search. So, blue Snaggletooth became kind of a myth, a legend. Who was this guy? Why was he blue? Why was he only sold at Sears? Is he an exclusive or is he a variant? And let me ask you this. If Red Snaggletooth is the second figure release, wouldn't Red Snaggletooth be the variant and Blue Snaggletooth the original? These are questions fans still ask themselves today. Blue Snaggletooth? Holiday special. <laughs> Holiday special action figure. <laughs> Holiday special action figure. <laughs> Laugh it up, fuzzball. Since all that, Snaggletooth probably has become the most famous variant figure of all times in any line. Everybody knows Blue Snaggletooth, even people that don't collect the vintage line. In fact, he's so popular, Funko made a pop of him, and General Giant made a jumbo. Yep, an even taller Blue Snaggletooth. And other companies have followed suit. Blue Snaggletooth became probably more famous than Red Snaggletooth. You know, Red Snaggletooth. You know, the holiday special action figure. <laughs> you played with a holiday action figure. <laughs> holiday action figure, you played with it. Oh, you asked your mom for a holiday action figure. I hate that. I hate the holiday special. Oh, I'm going to buy one and play with it. <laughs> oh, I'm going to make it talk to Maud. Hey, Maud, how you doing? Bad and compromising, enterprising, anything but tranquilizing. Right on, on, on. So, is this little tall blue guy rare? Well, in the 90s, in the trade magazines like Toy Shop, you can find him probably on about every five to six pages, somebody selling him. And now, thanks to eBay and the internet... You can find him pretty easy. Uh, on eBay, it's probably 25 to 30 a day. Is he rare? Well, it depends on what you mean by rare. Is he as common as a Luke Skywalker or a Han Solo action figure? No, he's not. Is he as rare as a Yak Face? Uh, they're both loose. It's probably about the same. Is he as rare as a Vinyl Cape Jawa? No, he's not that rare at all. So it all depends on what you mean. I would call him commonly rare. But the problem is finding someone, finding him with good boots on. If you can see that right there, uh, the paint on his boots come off real easy. So if you can find one in mint condition, you're going to cost you know, two, three hundred dollars probably. But he's not that rare if you're out looking for him. <sighs> but blue Snaggletooth. It's a little different than a variant figure. Most collectors that collect the line will not consider the line to be complete without blue Snaggletooth. Let's say if you have a jaw with a cloth cape or a jaw with a vinyl cape, it really doesn't matter. Just one's rarer than the other. But blue Snaggletooth is an essential figure to the line. In fact, he's part of the line. I just look at him as a Sears exclusive. So let's quit calling him a variant and call him what he is. A cool ass disco bitch! Um... our history of the blue snaggle tooth did you enjoy it man i have fun telling you about it so like i tell everybody else stop by starwarsjunk.net because hey we don't have just star wars junk we got junk about kenner indiana jones all kinds of stuff so it's not just all star wars so check us out if you got any questions leave it in the comments below hit that thumbs up and subscribe to our youtube channel until we got something else to talk about go watch star wars uh, Han Solo, uh, how come he doesn't have friends? Uh, or something. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Hey, Jumpman <laughs> channel popping, though. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony. <laughs>